Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Volkswagen, and I'm checking out a 2019 Volkswagen Jetta in the R-Line trim level. This Jetta is sitting on 205-55 Bridgestone tires, wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a kind of like a silver gray finish looking really nice with the faceted wheels it also has four-wheel disc brakes with a ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back the name of this color is pure white and it just looks like a regular non-pearl color to me in white but it does help to show some of the contrasting black here in the front so you can see around the fog lights there at the bottom and in the grill is all a matte or a flat black. And then you have the chrome there at the very top right here above the emblem with the R-line badging. And then you have chrome going around the headlights there. So the headlights are reflector LED headlights for your low and your high beams. You have an LED daytime running light there on the outside right in here. And standard bulbs for your turn signal here in the front and standard bulbs in a reflector housing for your fog light. Looking at the profile of the vehicle, check it out. Those wheels really stand out to me. I really like them. And then you have body colored handles and you notice the handles are in line with this uh, feet, body feature right in here, kind of blending in. The side mirror is black, gloss black on top, flat on the bottom, and the sunroof is surrounded by black as well. And the pillars are black as well, just to kind of give you that elongated look of the glass. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system designed where you can keep it in your pocket. And look how thin it is. It's much different from the previous Volkswagen keys. This one's thinner, feels a little bit lighter, just seems like it'd be easier to carry with you. It does have a physical key on the inside, lock and unlock, the ability to open up the trunk. But just overall, I think it's a really good design. You also have a panic button here on the edge. Let's go ahead and push that. So it has a little beepy horn and flashes the lights. As long as you have the key with you, as long as it's on the out, close to the outside of this door, you can lock the, lock the doors simply by, you see this little sensor right here? That's a sensor, a little line, and it'll lock the doors. You place your finger on that, it'll lock it. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle and it senses the hand position. It senses the key within a close proximity of the door and it allows you access to the vehicle. There's also a physical key location behind this cover. There's a little spot here that you can pop this open and you can access the physical key location um, to access the vehicle when the battery is dead. Looking on the inside of the passenger side door, it's mostly black except for the handle and this little accent right in here. It has a metallic accent with a pattern. The top portion is soft to the touch. It's kind of like a Nerf type material extends all the way around here you have hard plastics in this area around your arm here and here is soft to the touch as well this is kind of like a vinyl type material and then your hard plastics are again down at the bottom really large pocket here on the side the seats actually have two tones here you have a black and a gray or a tan looking color here and you can see the perforations in the center portion this these are heated seats and they're actually made out of a synthetic leather called vtex check out the leg room here you see there's some little bit of tapering on this side and then it swoops around 
I'm trying to give you the best leg room, but you can see there's some tapering there. I like the way the dashboard is kind of contours this way and then it goes around to the cockpit. You have a soft touch dash here. Have that same metallic accent going on. Let's look in the glove compartment. Wow, look how huge that is. All smooth plastic on the inside, easy to clean. It's all open too, there's nothing to get in the way. You can wipe it out real easy. It's one thing about compartments, it, sometimes they're hard to clean. So that's what I like to see, something that's easy to clean. Inside of the back door is all black for the most part, except for the handle, and it's almost all hard touch surfaces, except for here. This is the only soft touch surface on your armrest. I like this is really wide open. That handle is really out there so you can get a good grip on it and kind of contour so you can rest your arm a little bit in there. You have that same VTEX seating surfaces back here with the latch system for car seats that are easy to get to basically a bench seat with the 60 40 folding backs to add to your cargo space and then you have a pocket on the back of the passenger side seat floorboard and look at the uh the hump there in the center that's pretty good size armrest with cup holders you can move that out of the way in case you need a center passenger. Now they'll have to be kind of small because of that hump in the center and also you see it's not really contoured or anything. Fuel door is here on the passenger side. Open it up, it has a traditional cap, tether, and a little post to hang the cap here while you're pumping gas and it keeps it out of your way. So looking at the back of the vehicle, a little shark fin antenna there at the top is gloss black, so it's contrasting. LED third brake light right in here in the base of the glass. And the backup camera slightly offset right under here above the tag all, all LED lights in the tail lights so that's nice even your turn signals are LEDs here in the back now there's one thing I want to point out you see these chrome surrounds here well they're surrounding nothing it's basically a goes it's just sealed up there's no exhaust there the actual exhaust is underneath the vehicle so that's just for looks so if you think it has the dual chrome exhaust surrounds then I guess that's what they're intended to look like but now one good thing about those is those are just for looks anyway and these are gonna stay clean basically because there's no exhaust flowing through them so I guess that's a that might be a good thing Depending on your preferences, my preference is to have the backup camera in the very center, but you can see for some reason they had to offset it slightly. They didn't have to, but that's what they chose to do. But um, anyways, let's lift this up so you can see it's just slightly. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's when they're really offset over here, something like that, it really it messes up your, your sight picture when you're backing up. Um, this one looks fine. I mean, you probably won't even notice. Now I noticed uh, in the pre-production model, this would just basically fall down this tailgate um, or this trunk lid. But right now it doesn't go up like I, th I mean I guess it does a little bit, but it doesn't like spring up when you when you open it up. You do have to lift it up and then you push it and kind of locks it in place there. But it doesn't slam. Gonna you know, come back down like the the pre-production model.
taking a look at the trunk. I'm going to put all the measurements and specs and volumes in the description. All the specifications are just page after page of, of details that you can check out. I'll put all that stuff in the description. Now I want to show you, it has like a spring. So you can see that spring sticking out as I open and close it. That's what keeps it from slamming down. Here's your seat so you can fold down and add to your cargo space. And since it's split, you can add to your cargo space while maintaining passenger space, so that's nice. There is some exposed metal up here. And there's the latches for lowering the seat. There's one on each side. All right, so let's open this up. Get my hand under there, there we go. And there's a spare tire with tools. Even has the tow hook. And a lot of vehicles don't have spare tires anymore, so definitely want to check and see if you have a spare tire when buying a vehicle. Blind spot monitor system has an indicator in each side mirror. Lets you know when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Uh, it also lets you know as you're backing out of a parking space, whether if there's a car coming from either side. So that's the rear cross traffic alert system. This um, basically works with the same system, just in a different way when you're going forward or backwards. So with the proximity key, just have the key inside the vehicle. It can be in your pocket, in a bag or whatever. Just put your foot on the brake, hold it and push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see it snaps in place, keeping it in place for you so it doesn't slide underneath the pedals. There's your accelerator and brake pedal, really large footrest here on the left side. And here's the latch for your hood. We're going to look under the hood, but I'm going to show you, you notice this flush with this outer plastic. When you shut the door, it covers this up so you don't accidentally release the hood while you're driving. Opening the hood, there's a latch slightly to the right of center. So right in here, you push up on it like so. You see what it looks like there. And it releases the, the latch. And it's kind of a heavy hood. So I guess it's made out of steel. And it does require a prop to hold it up. And you can see it's color coded in yellow. And you swing it up and it goes right there. Under the hood is insulation. You also have insulation on the firewall as well as a heat shielding around the turbo in the back. So this is a 1.4 liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder engine. And it's not really covered up with a big plastic cover, so that's nice. We actually get to see some, some metal looking here. So this is paired to a, an eight speed automatic transmission and it also has an electronic um, blocking differential as well. So if you really need to gun it, get, get going fast, it's not gonna just spin one wheel and, and then you go nowhere. It actually locks the differential and, and gives you traction on both wheels. You also have an insulated battery there as well. And like I mentioned before, all the specs, torque, horsepower, you know, cylinder diameter or whatever, whatever detailed specs that you want to have uh, will be in the description so you can look through and at a glance get a ton of information. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. You have power windows, automatic, one touch down, one touch up. Same thing with the rear glass. So all, all, all windows are automatic, one touch up or down. Side mirrors are adjusted here. You just pick a side and adjust it with like a little joystick. They are heated as well. There's the ability to open up the trunk, door lock controls, all that. So you have a manually adjusted seat on the, pa on the driver's side as well as the passenger, but the driver has a height adjustment right there. Other than that, basically the same seat. I like the way the headrests are easy to adjust. So you just push this button here and it raises and lowers. Real simple, you don't have to reach under it and try to find some little latch or anything. It's real easy to adjust. And I know this is also called a head restraint and some people 
complain that they say I use the term headrest, um, but I use it as a headrest a lot more than I do a head restraint, so I think it's valid. Valid term, I think. To the left of the steering column, you have your headlight switch. So you have off, automatic, parking lights, and then on, and then you pull it out to turn on your fog lights. So as you turn it here, like so, then you can pull it out. As you turn it off, it'll go back in. And that way everything's turned off, including the fog lights. The steering column, you see the lever for the locking steering column. It's easy to find. It's tilt and telescope, and it's easy to lock back in place. Okay, so sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. And I'm six feet tall. I have the seat all the way back and all the way down, just to give you an idea of the, the potential room here. Uh, I, this is too far back for me, actually. I could barely, barely touch the pedals, and it just, I wouldn't feel safe driving it. I want to be able to reach the pedals properly, especially the brake pedal. Um, so this would be more room than I need, that's for sure. Okay, so it's a leather wrapped steering wheel. It says leather wrapped on the window sticker, so I guess it's real leather. A little bit of a flat bottom, gloss black. Cruise control here on the left side with the volume for your radio on the very bottom. And on the right side, you can change through your uh, tracks as far as your audio source or your radio stations, that kind of thing here. And these buttons, you have your Bluetooth and your voice recognition. Also, the other buttons correspond with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls are here. Turn signal and headlight dimmer switches on the left side. And check out the gauges. It has a little bit of a red accent there. That's nice. But mostly it's a flat black with the white lettering easy to focus on and transition your eyes off the road and into the gauges here. RPMs on the left with your engine coolant temperature. On the right is your speedometer and fuel gauge. And you notice the little fuel pump there has an arrow pointing to the right, letting you know which side the fuel door is on. Little information screen there in the center gives you it right now it's showing a digital speedometer, what gear you're in, a clock, outside temperature, a trip, things like this. But we can go in and use these buttons here to get some more information. So I scroll to the right just so I can show you as part of a menu system. And let's go to driving data, let's scroll down, uh, top speed since start, distance since start, travel time, range, fuel economy since start, fuel economy like a real time, oil temperature, then it goes back to your digital speedometer. Scrolling to the right, the assist systems, this is where you can turn on or off your blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert, and your front assist. So it actually break the vehicle, help break the vehicle if there's a, apply braking if there's a some kind of an emergency type thing. Typically that will not affect you. Audio, it just shows you what's going on with your radio. Telephone, this is where you can have caller ID. Uh, vehicle status. Um, this has an auto stop start feature right now. It's on standby. You have to have the seatbelt buckled and a few other stipulations before that's activated. So that's what that's talking about. And it goes back to your driving data, which is pretty much my default screen with the digital speedometer. That's what I'm used to. So here's your touch screen, and you notice it's accented with blue, so it's a little bit different from the gauges. It looks pretty cool. I really like blue and black mixed together. It looks nice. Then you have physical buttons on the outside. Tune, uh, tune through the stations and a volume knob. That's all traditional. So this is our radio screen with the presets or favorites there at the bottom. You can manually adjust through the stations, and it's pretty neat. You can turn this and kind of gives you that old school feel or you can push this right here to cycle through like so media let's push that so 
There's different sources of media, SD card, USB, and Bluetooth audio, which is plenty. There's your car, so your vehicle status, tire pressure monitoring system. So anything will pop up here, any kind of warnings or anything, like maybe even time to change the oil, that kind of stuff. Pair your phone under this. You can go into your apps. This actually has the ability to install Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or mirror link you just have to plug your phone in to the USB port in order to do that and then your settings are in this this button right here climate control is down here it's a dual zone driver and passenger temperatures fan speed is in the middle front and rear defrosters are in the center uh, you can push the menu which I'll show you that in a second and look at the screen then you have your air conditioning controls there you can sync both the driver and passenger by push, pushing that button. Then you have heated seat controls. So you push it, that's the three stage, one, two, three, and off. Then where you want the air to blow and your front defroster there. Recirculate the air. So we push this menu button and it shows us our temperature and where the air is currently blowing out at. So we can adjust that the way we want it. Down here is a USB port. This is where you'd plug in to do your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto type deal. And a large pocket, rubberized pocket or storage space here that you can put your cell phone or whatever you want. It's a 12 volt power supply. We already saw the push button start. Electronic parking brake here. You just lift it up to activate it. Put your foot on the brake to push it down to release it. It has a status light. That's the auto start start feature. And then you have the eco mode so you can push that to get a little bit better gas mileage of course you're going to take a hit on performance a little bit let's go ahead and put it in reverse check out the backup camera neutral drive and then you have a sport mode you just bump it down to sport mode bump it down again to back to drive so it shows up here on what, what you're doing. So bump it down, sport mode. Bump it down again, drive. So right there. You can also change through the gears by pushing it to the right and bumping it like a ratchet shifter. And it'll also show you what gear you're in when you do that. All right, so there's some cup holders, a little storage space there. Here's your armrest. Really soft. Not quite big enough to share with the passenger. Not for me anyway. I'm kind of stingy when it comes to armrests. All right, this lifts up and it just stops wherever you rest it. That's nice. And lift it all the way up. And the fact that the inside is not black helps out a lot because if you're putting stuff in here and just trying to look in here in general, Having that lighter color makes it easier to see in there. There's a like a felt at the very bottom. Let's take that out so you can see what it looks like underneath. It's all smooth plastic, so it's easy to clean out. So you can take this out, clean it, clean the whole thing, put it back together. I think that's important with pockets. Oh yeah, another thing is it has these little rubber bumpers right here here and here so it doesn't rattle so just because it doesn't lock down it doesn't lock down but it's not going to rattle on you also there's places for wires to go in and out here as well as in the back so as far as cleaning pockets I always have developed an eye for that because you're going to clutter up these compartments the glove compartment this compartment here you're going to clutter it up you're going to put stuff in there it's going to get dirty so you need to clean it if it's hard to clean, that's just going to make your experience worse with the vehicle. Um, you're going to, you know, just, it's better to have a, a storage compartment that's easy to clean. Uh, also, like this compartment here, it actually has a removable uh, rubber tray. So this liner is removable. You see a little tab in the back, you just reach in there and you can take it out, clean it, clean it underneath it and put it back in. Rearview mirror has the manual day and night mode. 
You have some tap lights, rear lights, and then your, uh, you can have all the interior lights turn on with the door if you have that uh, activated. This is for your sunroof. We'll get to it, that in a minute. Check it out. Place to put your shades and it has a rubber lining in it. The visor has like this vinyl, textured vinyl wrapping. A little clip right here. This opens up and you have a mirror, but you also have a light that turns on when you open up the mirror. And the light will turn off. If you leave the little slider open, you lift it up, it'll eventually turn off. So that way it doesn't stay on all the time and you're not aware of it. Also, it slides in and out. Okay, it's time to look at the sunroof. So the sunroof has a shade, but the shade doesn't cover 100% of the light. It covers about half, I guess you could say. Open this up. Let's go ahead and tilt it up. Tilt it down. Move it back. All right, that's as far back as it goes. Seems like a pretty quiet vehicle. As soon as that closed up, that fire truck was and it's loud. All right, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So, so you have the little windows behind the back seats, which helps out. Just a little subtle window like that can really make a difference as far as seeing a vehicle in your blind spot. Headrests do get in the way a little bit, but of course, if you have passengers back there, then their heads are going to get in the way, depending on how big their hairdo is. Of course, you can lay the seats down if you want to add to your visibility. It does have the blind spot, rear cross traffic, backup camera, all that stuff as well. All right, so there you have it, the R-Line of the 19 Jetta. Really nice, stylish comfortable roomy check it out for yourself take it for a test drive thank you for watching thank you to east coast volkswagen here in myrtle beach south carolina and i'll see you guys next time